Welcome back to the playlist on alcohol slash ethanol metabolism and its uses. Um, what we just saw, I just showed you a flashback to essentially two videos ago, I think it was. And what we looked at was essentially, we looked at this. So let me draw this molecule, get my brush here and the right color. So we had a molecule, that's actually the wrong brush, here we go. We looked at a molecule that essentially looked like this. In fact, this molecule is the one that's shown right here. Okay, And this is actually what we're going to look at the metabolism of. Um, this one, if you remember from the end of that video, the, the flashback I showed, this was called ethane 1,1 diol. And it was essentially the molecule that you get after the heme-mediated component of ethanol oxidation was completed, okay, in the uh, P452E1 enzyme reaction. Essentially, what's thought to happen is this molecule will leave the active site of the P450 because the hydroxylation has already occurred on ethanol. And then there's a sort of a spontaneous elimination of water, and what you get after that is acetaldehyde. And that's this molecule right here. We looked at the, the creation of acetaldehyde by ethanol. Once in a while, though, this ethane-1,1-diol actually doesn't do this elimination. It doesn't do the proton transfer and elimination, and so you're left with this molecule right here. The question is, what do you do with it? Because as we know, I talked about in the previous videos, that whenever you have molecules that are metabolized by P450s, generally those molecules are toxic and foreign and you have to, weigh, have to have a way to get rid of those. Now I've been through Biochem 1 and 2 and beyond and I've never seen this molecule in any of their contexts which leads me to believe that it's toxic and foreign. So we do have to have a way to get rid of it and in fact what we're going to do is a mechanism that's going to be absolutely identical to what we looked at in the video from which the flashback came. Okay, We're actually going to hydroxylate it using the same P450 Cype 2E1 and then we're actually going to do a proton transfer and elimination from there. Okay, And when we do that, that's this reaction up here. We have this ethane-1,1-diol. We're going to use the P450 uh, typical reaction, use NADPH, molecular oxygen. And once we do that, we're going to get acetic acid, which, as we know, will lose a proton in solution to make acetate. And we'll get, our, get back our oxidized coenzyme, NADP+, and water. And again, this is the same P450 we looked at in that video. This is site 2E1. And just like all of these P450s, if it's not in the mitochondria, this is going to be a smooth ER enzyme. So we more or less consider it being um, cytosolic. But it's, in the, it's, a, it's a membrane-bound enzyme in the smooth ER. Well, let's actually look at that mechanism now. Remember this iron right here with the oxo species here, iron oxo in the 5 plus oxidation state. This is an intermediate in the P450 catalytic cycle. If you need more information on how we got to this particular intermediate, you can certainly go back and watch the P450 complete catalytic cycle and you'll see how we get this. Suffice it to say, we use molecular oxygen to do that and two electrons from P450 reductase. Okay, well in any case, we're here in this point in the mechanism. We have this iron oxo species. Let's look at how we do that hydroxylation do the mechanistic steps in green. I think you'll find it's the same mechanism that we looked at in the alcohol oxidation video using site 2 e one So one of these uh, coordinate covalent bonds here to the oxygen is going to essentially do a hydrogen abstraction with the diol right here. That's going to generate a radical electron on what was the diol, and then one of these electrons is going to end up on the iron 5 plus. That's going to reduce it into the 4 plus state. And once we do that, we have this hydroxide species coordinated to the iron here in the 4 plus state, and then this radical ethane 1,1 diol intermediate. Now what's going to happen is we're going to couple this hydroxyl, effective hydroxyl group here to the radical electron here. One of these electrons is going to couple. This radical electron is going to couple here, and we're going to form an OH bond to that carbon. The other electron in this coordinate covalent bond will end up back on the iron, therefore reducing it into the 3 plus state. And now what we essentially have is a trihydroxylated 2-carbon hydrocarbon. 
Okay, so this is ethane 111 triol. Let's write that down. This is an intermediate, but it is ethane, ethane, and the way we designate it is 1, 1, 1, and then triol. Well, when we looked at that previous site 2E1 mechanism video for ethanol, uh, we hydroxylated it and we saw what happened. Remember, there was an internal proton transfer and then a subsequent elimination to generate acetaldehyde. Well, we're going to look at a mechanism that's basically identical to that, except we're not going to get acetaldehyde because we have an extra OH group. We're instead going to get acetic acid. So what's going to happen is there's going to be an internal proton nucleophilic attack followed by carbonyl formation and elimination. Okay. So what we're going to get also out of this is we're going to actually get, oops, that's the wrong place. We're actually going to get out of this, do this, we're going to get H2O out of there. That's one of our products, water. And then the other thing that we're going to get is this molecule down here. This molecule is acetic acid. Now, this is sort of just a, a, an aside, but remember acetic acid, this um, proton and this oxygen here of the carboxylic acid. Carboxylic acids, particularly acetic acid, has a pKa of about 4.76. And so that is lower than the pH of the solution, which is probably about somewhere above 7, 7.4, somewhere around there. Whatever it is, it's a pKa that's significantly lower than the pH, so this proton will be lost to solution. And then you will end up with the final product of this. You will end up with this molecule, which is just acetate, essentially the conjugate base of acetic acid. And acetate by itself, believe it or not, um, can actually cause some problems as well. Um, one thing that we talked about in the alcohol metabolizing video is that is that acetate is one of the compounds that's a metabolite here that's possibly responsible for the production of the hangover that you get if you drink too much alcohol. You are probably aware that when you drink too much alcohol, you go to bed, you wake up with a hangover. There are some proposed mechanisms as to why. This is one of them that an acetate is a contributor to that. So likewise, we have to have a way to get rid of acetate. And in the next video, we're going to look at how you do that. It's actually through an enzyme called acetyl-CoA synthetase, aka acetate coenzyme A ligase. So I hope this mechanism made a little bit of sense. Join us in the next video when we look at the mechanism of that particular enzyme. See you soon.